What is going on, Eye of Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're going to talk about this new study that was just released a brand new study looking at breakfast consumption and total deaths. It included deaths from cardiovascular disease, strokes, all cause mortality, and heart disease. It included over 6,550 participants, and the results were very interesting. We're going to go ahead and break that down in this video. Stay tuned. All right, quickly before I start, this video is brought to you by Flex Pro Meals. If you're tired of counting calories, counting macros, and you just want to streamline this process, Flex Pro Meal delivers full meals directly to your house. Using gourmet chefs, these meals have already been constructed. You'll see all the calories, macro breakdowns, so you'll know exactly how much you're consuming. Their menus have so much variety that you can find exactly what you're looking for. The link will be down in the description below, and remember to use the promo code Flex. 20 so you can get 20% off your entire first order now let's go ahead and jump into the video now this study has been pushed a lot through the media uh, because it's a big study it's 6550 participants and it's shown that there's an 87% higher risk of death for those who skip breakfast versus those who consume breakfast as I mentioned before the bigger the study or the bigger the amount of participants are in the study it creates limitations in terms of how the data is collected the surveys were collected from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey so it's a combination of a survey and a combination of an examination they'll do a questionnaire and they'll also have a physical examination obviously it's not being controlled for and all those different things but those are the things that you sacrifice when you're increasing the amount of people if you're gonna have 200,000 participants you can't control for every single participant in a 200,000 group same thing with 6,550 participants you're not gonna be able to directly control every single thing and look at everything throughout the years throughout the days and months and all of that it's just overwhelming and, and just impossible to do so to me all data is good data even this data is good because it's connecting something and looking at the variables and then it's connecting something and looking at the outcome Comes. And that's just something that has to be accepted. When there's a lot of people in the group, a massive amount of people, it's going to be something of a questionnaire, observational, it's going to be those kind of studies. So it's a cohort study and they looked at people who ate breakfast, they looked at people who some days ate breakfast, they looked at people who rarely ate breakfast, and then they looked at people who never ate breakfast. Now the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey did have another question where it was, do you eat breakfast on the weekends? And people would fill that out instead too. The, it would be, it was, uh, it was, I always eat breakfast, I some days eat breakfast, I rarely eat breakfast, I eat breakfast on the weekend, and I never eat breakfast. And the ones that took this cohort study, what they did is they lumped in weekends with some days. And looking through all of this data, they looked at stroke, and it was higher for never. They looked at cardiovascular disease, that was also higher for never eating breakfast. And they looked at heart disease, and that was higher for never eating breakfast, and all-cause mortality, which is dying from anything, it doesn't matter what it is, it could be getting hit by a bus or it can be because you had a heart attack or whatever it is all cause mortality just means that you died and there isn't a specificity to why it's just that you passed away and so all cause mortality any reason for death was in that group and that was also higher in the group that never ate breakfast the only thing with this study though is that it doesn't show that not eating breakfast causes these things it just shows that there's an association it just shows that hey if you eat breakfast for some reason you die less but it doesn't show that eating breakfast protects you from all of these things there are also studies that were done back in 2003 using the same examination survey looking at 1999 to 2000 and it showed that those who ate breakfast were more likely white female non-smokers and were very physically active and looking at this study when they broke it down and they looked at the people who didn't consume uh, breakfast the ones who didn't consume breakfast were most likely former smokers heavy drinkers have very poor diets and were physically inactive and also were obese so all of the factors that would cause someone to have all these things stroke comes from smoking and poor uh, diet and so does cardiovascular disease comes from 
poor diet, unhealthy diet comes from smoking and heart disease comes from things like smoking and poor diet, obesity, things like that. So the people who skip breakfast are the people who have the worst diet and lifestyle. And that's where it kind of falls apart is that cardiovascular disease is not caused because you didn't eat breakfast. Cardiovascular disease is caused by the things that you do eat and your lifestyle in terms of if you're a smoker, if you're a drinker, those are the things that cause cardiovascular disease. Not eating breakfast doesn't cause cardiovascular disease. But the unfortunate thing is that the group that doesn't eat breakfast are the ones that tend to have all of these unhealthy lifestyles. So yes, if you were to pull back and zoom out as much as you can, you'll say, hey, look, people who don't eat breakfast are worse off health-wise than people who do eat breakfast. But when you zoom in and you look at what are these factors that are causing these deaths, these early deaths and these diseases, you'll see that it's the actual lifestyle. It's not the skipping of the breakfast, it's the smoking and the drinking and the unhealthy diet and the obesity that is causing them to uh, die earlier than those who eat breakfast. And there just happens to be this connecting correlation. People who eat breakfast tend to be physically fit, are physically active, eat healthier, are very conscious, are non-smokers, are non-drinkers. That's just the connection of what the groups of people who eat breakfast tend to do. And if you take that information, of course, those who eat breakfast are going to uh, be healthier because it's not about eating breakfast and not eating breakfast. It's about the lifestyle. Don't use this study to confuse this with intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, when you're skipping breakfast, you are skipping breakfast, but you're intentionally doing it and you are focused on your lifestyle. You're not just doing that and then just being unhealthy. You're using intermittent fasting to be healthier. So you're compounding that with a healthy lifestyle. You're eating cleaner, you're doing physical exercise, things like that. You're incorporating factors that are found in the group that eats breakfast. And how you know that the breakfast itself isn't really the catalyst for any of these things happening is when you look at other surveys and you look at other breakdowns and the numbers are completely different. For example, the 2003 study looking at examination survey saw that you were at a 27% higher risk as opposed to this one showing that you were at an 87%. So that is drastically completely different numbers. And the one in 2003 looked at over 20,000 participants. So when you increase the amount of people, all of a sudden the numbers are drastically different. And the reason that they're drastically different is because it's not really about the skipping of the breakfast. It's about the lifestyle behind that person who's skipping breakfast. And to even further show that there isn't really a correlation with consistently eating breakfast, the study itself, the cohort study itself, shows all of the different answers and created a chart so you can clearly see who was affected more by the different situations. And the ones who ate breakfast just some days had a better overall health ratio than the ones that ate breakfast every day. So if you ate breakfast every day, you weren't better off than the people who ate breakfast some days. And the people who ate breakfast rarely, not never, but rarely, died the least for strokes over people who ate breakfast some days and over people who ate breakfast every single day. So yes, looking at the study, people who skip breakfast uh, tend to die earlier or had more uh, cardiovascular diseases, strokes, and heart disease, but it isn't just black and white because people who rarely ate breakfast died the least for a stroke. People who ate breakfast some days had the best overall outcome, dying the least for cardiovascular disease, dying the least for heart disease. So it's all over the place. You're not seeing a gradual increase in the chart for the more breakfast you eat, the better you are. Looking at the chart, the best evidence you have to see that eating breakfast continuously or as much as possible wasn't the common factor that caused the stroke is the fact that rarely eating breakfast, rarely eating breakfast had the best outcome for least amount of deaths in stroke. So the common factor is not breakfast or not breakfast. The common factor is more than likely the healthy lifestyle or the non-healthy lifestyle of the participants. Unfortunately, the people who never ate breakfast also had the worst type of lifestyle. And that's what causes stroke, cardiovascular disease, and heart disease. All this study can do is show that there's an association, but it doesn't show that there's causation. And the evidence within the study show that the causation isn't breakfast, and it's more than likely just the lifestyle of the participants 